What's up everybody? In today's project, I'm going to show you how to install an Armstrong drop ceiling in a basement. This video is going to cover every step of the drop ceiling installation process, from how to plan your layout, how to install the wall moldings, how to install the grid, and finally, how to install the drop ceiling panels and cut out the penetrations for recessed lighting. I think this drop ceiling looks fantastic, and I want to give a huge shout out to Armstrong Ceilings for sending us the product for this project. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so we have a lot to cover in this video, so let's start with step one and plan out our ceiling grid layout. So it really shouldn't come as a surprise that a successful drop ceiling project starts with planning. If you're a little bit old school, you can use some graph paper and a calculator to map out your room grid, or you can use Armstrong Ceilings online resource, which allows you to enter your room dimensions, enter the size of your panels, enter the ceiling joist direction, and it's gonna calculate how many panels you're gonna need, and it's also gonna figure out the width of your border panels. It's pretty handy. Let's take a look at this example room, which is 132 inches by 104 inches. If we look at the horizontal run, you can see that we have room for five full 24 inch ceiling panels, which leaves us with 12 inches left over. You wanna divide that by two so that you have an even border panel on both sides of the room. In this case, that gives us six inches. You can apply that same concept for the 104 inch dimension of the room, and that's gonna give us four inches on each side for the border panels. Hopefully that makes sense, but if you need a little bit more information on planning your layout, you can check out my blog resource down in the video description. After planning the grid layout, it's time to install the wall moldings. But before going any further, you should note that there's a few specific tools and materials you're gonna need to actually install this drop ceiling, and I'll link those down in the video description if you wanna check those out. To install the wall molding, you first need a level line across the wall, and to establish this, I recommend the use of a laser level, and check with the drop ceiling manufacturer to see how much clearance you need beneath the joist. And if you don't have a laser level, you can go old school and use a straight edge to mark a straight line across the wall. Next, take your 90 degree angle wall molding and position it so that it's even with the laser level that you established previously. Because the wall molding is made of metal, I found that self-tapping metal screws are the easiest to go through the molding and into the wall studs. Fasten the wall molding to the wall studs every 16 inches on center, which is standard for most walls. To cut the wall molding to the right length, use tin snips and it's honestly not difficult at all. I'll link the tin snips I use Used in the video description. If you're working alone, you can use painter's tape or bar clamps to hold one side of the wall molding while you fasten it to the wall studs. So the straight runs of the wall molding, that's easy. But now let's talk about how to do the inside corners and the outside corners. Those are a little bit trickier, but not much. So in this corner of the room, I'm gonna demonstrate the inside corner here. And according to the manufacturer, you're gonna butt up the two edges as shown. I found myself tucking one into the other, but that's probably not recommended. Now for the outside corner here, you can see that I got it level with that laser line, then I taped it in place, and now we're going to cut a 45 degree miter using tin snips. The first thing I did was I marked where it was in line with the wall, and here's a quick representation of the 45 degree angle with a pencil. So I'm cutting the straight line first with the tin snips, then I'm going to flip the wall molding over and cut that 45 degree angle. So after cutting both 45 degree miters, here's the inside corner and I can have the first 45 on the outside there. Then I'm gonna take the second 45 and butt it up against the first 45. This is just a quick mock-up for illustration purposes and don't worry, I'm gonna erase that pencil mark. So after cleaning up those 45 degree miters off camera, I'm gonna attach the wall molding to the wall using self-tapping screws, just like before. There's the first piece and here's the second piece that I'm installing right there. Looks pretty good. Continue to install your straight runs, your inside corners, and your outside corners of wall molding all around the room until you have a level wall molding all throughout. And after installing the wall molding, now's a good time to install any kind of soundproofing or insulation since the next steps are just going to get in the way of doing this. After installing the wall molding, it's time to install the hanger wire or the quick hang grid hook. So on the perimeter of the room, the drop ceiling grid is going to be supported by the wall molding, but in the center of the room, the grid is supported by either hanger wire or for residential projects like mine, quick hang hardware, which is much easier to install. Here's a look at the quick hang bracket, which attaches directly to the ceiling joist. And then we have our quick hang hook, which when we squeeze this together, we can slide it through like that turn it over, and then when we squeeze the tabs here, we can adjust the height of the hook. This is super simple to adjust and way easier than hanger wire. Let's install it. Because the quick hang hardware is used to support the main beams, we need to position it so that it's either one border panel's length away from the wall or a border panel's length 
plus 24 inches, which is the size of one standard ceiling panel. So what I'm doing here is using a tape measure to measure the distance, which is the border panel's length, plus around 24 inches, giving me about 30 inches from the wall. And then I used a laser level to establish an even line all the way across. If you don't have a laser line, you can tap in a temporary nail and use a chalk line to snap it. And this is gonna indicate exactly where you need to install the quick hang hardware on each of the joists. To install the quick hang hardware bracket, position it where you mark the line and then hammer in the temporary tabs to hold it in place temporarily. Then you can either use two nails through the tabs there or just one screw right down the middle. Continue to install quick hang brackets so that the spacing does not exceed four feet between them. After installing the quick hang brackets for the first main beam, repeat the exact same process for the next main beam, which is gonna be located four foot away from the first main beam. Snap a chalk line and attach the brackets to the joist just like before. At this point, you can install the quick hang hooks by pushing the tabs together and inserting the hook up through the perforations. If you have an obstruction at the top, like I do with this insulation, you wanna bend the hook out of the way as opposed to cutting it. Insert the quick hang hooks through all of the quick hang brackets that are part of your installation area. To set the height of the hooks, I recommend that you use a string line at the top of the wall molding, and the idea is that the bottom of the hooks will be even with the top of the wall molding. Squeeze the tabs together and adjust as needed. After installing the quick hang hardware, it's time to prepare and hang the main beams. But not so fast. You can't just go install a full piece of main beam because you need to trim the end of the main beam so that the cross T slot on the main beam is a border panel distance from the wall. This is gonna give you the perfect size opening for the drop ceiling panel we're gonna install later. So after determining how much of the main beam you need to cut off based on your grid layout, use tin snips to cut the top of the main beam first and then the bottom. This will give you a flat piece of beam that you're gonna rest on top of the wall molding. Place the cut end on top of the wall molding as shown and then you're gonna use the quick hang hooks to go through the circular perforations in the main beam. If you need to connect two pieces of main beam together, you're gonna to grab one side, grab the other, and there's tabs that you're gonna force into place and you should hear an audible click when it interlocks properly. Note that you'll have to cut the length of the second beam so that it interlocks with the first beam and so the end which you cut will land directly on top of the wall molding as shown. Repeat the process of measuring the main beam, cutting the main beam, placing the cut edge of the beam on the wall molding, hanging the main beam from the quick hang hardware, and finally interlocking two pieces of main beam together for all of the rest of the main beam you need for your project. Remember, the main beams need to be four feet apart. After installing the main beams, it's time to prepare and cut the border and cross tees. Let's start with the border tees, which are gonna go between the main beam and the wall molding. Position one end of the cross tee so that it's flush up against the wall, resting on top of the wall molding, and I like to mark in the center of the main beam for where I'm actually gonna cut that cross tee. After cutting it, you're gonna flip it around, put the cut edge on top of the wall molding, and then insert the uncut edge into the main beam. Repeat the process of measuring, marking, cutting, and installing the second border cross tee, and then we're gonna install two full four foot cross tees between the main beams, in line with the first two border cross tees. The full four foot cross tees are super easy to install since they don't require any trimming. Just put them in the right perforation and then click it into place. And after that's done, we're gonna square the grid. To check if your grid is square, you're gonna measure the diagonal distance between the opposite sides of a two foot by four foot grid opening. And if that measurement is the same, the grid is square. If you measure both diagonals and it's not the same, you might need to do a little bit of trimming or tweaking until the measurements are the same. Don't proceed with the installation until confirming that your grid is square. After confirming that the grid is square, it's time to install the remaining grid and level the system. To install the remaining grid, I recommend that you start by installing the rest of the border cross tees, then install the four foot cross tees between the main beams, and then I would go back and install the two foot cross tees that go between the four foot cross tees. This is because we're using two foot by two foot ceiling panels. If we were using four foot by two foot panels, you wouldn't need to install those two foot cross tees between the four foot cross tees. Hopefully that makes sense. Install all of the remaining cross tees until your grid is complete. Lastly, take a magnetic level and stick it to each of the main beams to confirm that your grid is perfectly level. If you need to make any adjustments by adjusting the quick hang hooks, do that at this stage. 
At this point, we finally got to the fun part and we can install the drop ceiling panels. Armstrong manufactures a bunch of different styles of ceiling panels. I went with these 24 inch by 20 inch shallow coffers and also these 24 inch by 24 inch flat white panels. I needed to use two types and I'll show you why in just a second. So the first thing I did was install all of the full panels of the shallow coffers. And to do that, you're gonna insert it into the grid at an angle and then drop it down into place so it rests on the grid. Installing these drop ceiling panels isn't rocket science and it's actually pretty fun because you get to see the project finally start to come together. Additionally, the PVC is gonna be moisture resistant in the event that any of the pipes in the ceiling ever leak which I really hope never happens. Also, make sure that you wash your hands before you install these drop ceiling panels for obvious reasons. Yo, bro, did you wash your hands before touching that ceiling tile? Me? No, why? Oh. To install the recessed lights you're seeing now, I used the template that came with the lights to mark the cutout, then cut it out with some tin snips. After cutting out the penetration, I inserted the recessed light, made sure that the tabs on the side of the light engaged, and made sure it was flush with the drop ceiling panel. Then, I hooked up the electrical, which was simply a screwing connection, and then I inserted the drop ceiling panel into place, just like we did for the others. Repeat this process for all of the recessed lights that make up your drop ceiling layout. So at this point, we've installed all of the full 24 inch by 24 inch drop ceiling panels. And all we have left to do is to install the border panels, which are gonna require some cutting. Armstrong recommends that you don't cut the PVC shallow coffers. So that's why I had to buy the flat panels, which I'm gonna use for the borders. To install the border panels, first measure how big the border panels are gonna have to be, then use a straight edge and a utility knife to score and snap the PVC panels to the right size. After cutting the panels, install them in place and repeat this process for all of the rest of the border panels that are part of your installation. So at this point, you've completed all the steps in the drop ceiling installation. Let's take a quick reminder look of where we started. And here's a look at the final result. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more DIY content like this. For additional information on installing a drop ceiling, I recommend that you check out my blog or you can watch Armstrong Ceilings YouTube video on the entire drop ceiling installation process. Thanks again to Armstrong for sending us the product for this video. I really like how it looks in my basement. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all on the next one.